Okay, we got spoiler corner here, and obviously the biggest thing we should talk about. I didn't know this was like. Uh, IHOP uh, is Superman's father, I, we yeah. discovered. Uh, I just want to say, this is probably the worst product placement I've ever seen, is the IHOP and Sears. Sears. LexaCorp, it even advertises its own made-up companies. <laughs> oh, Wayne Enterprises was somewhere, I read that was an Easter egg in there, and I was like, don't care. <laughs> but, um, but I mean, the, the big thing that, I, I guess this is like, a really big shock is the ending. Uh, which is funny, because I don't think either of us had that big a problem with it. I actually liked it if they addressed it more, but we'll, we'll, we'll tell you what it is. Uh, so you got... Uh, Superman kills a dude. He just totally snaps somebody's neck. Uh, he kills Zod. Basically snaps his neck at the very end of the movie. But, because, but there's... Because Zod is firing laser eyes at a family of four... That could very easily that have get a good it, but... ten feet with which to scurry away, but even though Superman is gripping Zod like in a total headlock, and Zod is just slowly <laughs> making his, you know, little laser eyes over there. This family's like, ah, 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 and like, just not bolting. I, at that point, I was like, let him die. Darwin Award an act. <laughs> you tried, Superman. It's not going to happen. But, but now, here's the thing. Now, here's the thing with that, because that's... That okay, is that, that's, that's, that's superhero. That, that's comic book. It just know? bothers me just because it's so dumb and you're hinging the climax on that. Yeah, but, I mean, so, so um, you got this, and it's the idea is that he either has to... He has to protect the people or they're going to die. Never mind all the civilians in the city has been destroyed and stuff and him destroying these buildings. But you get the idea. He has to save these civilians and the laser's going to kill him. So he snaps Zod's neck and it, it's a big scene. Zod goes down. Superman lets out this great big... No! Oh, like that really, I mean, it obviously really affects him. And I am fine with all that because at some point this choice is going to come to somebody who does have these powers as doing what he does and you're gonna have to make that choice. I like they didn't tap dance around it like the Dark Knight did where it's like, well no, I can save everything or how Spider-Man did, I can save everything. No, he, he, there's a point where this will most likely actually happen. Yeah. But how do they handle it? I was fine it? with it. How do they handle they it? Don't. <laughs> they don't. Literally they don't. Literally the even, next scene. It literally he takes down yeah. a satellite. Again, another explosion before when you're going to yeah, develop something. Reading oh, up, boom! Yeah, explosion. reading up on it, I found out Nolan hated that. Um, the only really good idea. The only really good idea, and <laughs> Nolan hates ethical it. Choice. But, you know, an actual ethical choice. That, you know, but it, it makes sense, though, that Nolan hated it, and they were debating so long because it feels like such an afterthought. It matches Nothing that the movie was building up to. It was like not a, building up to it. It, it never, never, it never, off after. yeah, at no point did the movie really establish conclusively that, like, Superman cannot kill. This is the law. These are the rules. Dark Knight hammers it in. This never even talks about oh, it. Oh, yeah, I mean, every second he Batman. Said, Kevin every, Costner says, with the kids on the bus, was I supposed to let him die? He says, maybe. maybe. Uh, first of all, we'll sick talk about fucking yeah, father, uh, we'll, but we'll talk second, about that, but, yeah, it's like, but this wasn't the problem. even an issue. And, you know, people are like, well, I like the idea. I'm like, I like the idea too, but it, it just cuts away, and Superman's like, well, I saved the day, the end, and I'm like, never brought and people, up. Well, and like, the excuse I'm reading, again, from it's always the same crowd of Nolan can do no wrong, or, and in this case, not even Nolan, um, but that this film can do no wrong, is like, well, they'll do it in the sequel. Why? <laughs> Why don't you just handle it now? I, I was saying, if Superman they move this faces scene, no consequences for any of his choices in this. If they move this scene to the middle of the film, and they don't make it Zod, they just make it one of the foot soldiers or something like that, it's gonna do this, and he kills him, wouldn't this be a much more interesting movie oh, yeah. that he has to live with this choice, and what did that oh, choice yeah. mean? If and he, what does this if mean he being who he injuring is? injuring or maiming anybody, and this is what I was trying to get to in the review proper that maybe I didn't explain. It's not the fact that it's different, or that, that they're trying to do something different, or, you know, it's different from the Nolan film. It's the fact that it takes no risks. There is not a single risk in this entire well, the, script. Breaking the neck, actually, I think is a risk. The, okay, uh, fine. So you had that one risk that you inserted at the end as an afterthought, and what did you do with it? No, uh, not, yeah. Nothing. Nothing so at in all. the end, there was no risk. It's just like the ending to Into Darkness, where we're just like, well, guess a risk for the out. character. Yes, yeah, okay, there's no you. risk for the character. I mean, it's a risk in as much that just like, oh, I can't believe they actually did that, but they don't address it at all. No, no. You know, no. the script basically is, the script has no balls. It just, it, like, people are just like, you don't get it, it's dark, it's so much darker. Well, okay, you can make it dark by removing the color from it, which you did, and by just making Superman angsty, but if you're not going to take a risk here, you've added no real darkness. All it's done is just sort of substituted moping around, you know, and not enjoying being Superman for darkness. Here's like, 
somebody was like talking about the, the truck stop joke where Superman's getting picked on and of course because we have to have Superman be Jesus, this film hammers this in again and again. With, There's literally a picture of Jesus yeah, in the background not so subtle in, in, <laughs> really in a, in a scene that actually was really great until it kept showing that stained glass window. It's so funny. But yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like symbolism in case you didn't realize. Um, he, you know, basically is getting this truck driver's harassing some waitress and Superman's like, Clark's like, hey, cut it out. And the guy's like, what are you going to do? And basically, you know, smacks Clark around or Pours whatever. And, face yeah, and, and Clark just has to take it because he's Jesus. I'm like, okay, I guess that's where we're going with these Jesus. The truck driver walks out and his truck is completely destroyed, crucified even. Truxified, yeah. It's pretty much <laughs> impaled. Tru Truxified, truckified. Yeah, and I'm like, wait a second, so this movie just had Kevin Costner yelling at us for an hour, no, you have to be Jesus, no, you never That's reveal your identity, yelling. <laughs> yeah, no, this, and I'm like, and yet, in broad daylight, in public, you know, Superman goes into a parking lot at a truck stop, somebody had to see or hear this, how do you do that silently, and crucifies a truck and thus destroys this truck driver's entire way of life. I won't you know, hurt you, just hurt your leg or punch you or anything like that, but I will and destroy your And I can hear people leg. already going, nitpicking, nitpicking, it was a funny joke. Okay, so it's a cute moment, but it makes no sense when you're going out of your way in this script to hammer this other moral to death and then just completely throw it out the window. And I'm like, I would have been fine if they do that, if Superman regrets it later, or you see him contemplating his actions, or, you know, somebody's like, well, well, he's angstier, he's darker, he would do that, because at some point he has to snap, then show him snap. It didn't even show him snap, we just see a truck sitting there. How dark would it have been if Superman does break character, where as a kid, like a normal kid would do, he's finally like, fuck this shit, I'm fighting back, and he injures a kid. What if he paralyzes a kid? Yeah, he said Take there's no... Take that angst with you, script. Like, there's that no would be dark. I mean, you yeah. are right. There's no consequences for There is no... Actions. There is no... That's the funny thing is everybody who tries to say, well, it's darker, you don't get it. I do get it, and I'm saying it's not dark enough. If you're going to make it dark, then go all out with it. Don't sit here and try to be all things to all people and say, well, we're going to do the Dog Donner film, but we're going to make it darker, and at the same time, we're going to recycle everything we did in Batman Begins. The Donner film, in many respects, is kind of dark when you really yeah. look at it. You, you kill! It has a lame <laughs> you know? deus ex machina ending, but, I mean, until then, there's it was some heavy dark. stuff, and it really talks about the choice, but, I mean, we, we can go on and on about how much better that film Yeah, is. but um, should we talk about... The death in the middle of the Phantom yeah, Tornado. No, that's th 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 this isn't our one. How do you even favorites. describe this? Okay, so um, so just as Costner is going on another speech, a match yeah, about long, what it means to be Superman. Speech. Uh, as he's talking, just up oh, tornado. The fuck? No, I'm not. I'm not kidding. <laughs> just up the I, no, I'm not. I don't know. It's like oh, tornado. We gotta move it. It's like. This, I, yeah, and this is, what this, thing for yeah, me. this is what bothers me. This is what bothers me. He's going on a three-minute speech with Ma, you know, Ma Clark, you know, Ma Kent. Well, to protect people, not realizing there's a yeah. tornado forming. It's driving <laughs> straight into run. a tornado, and this is not like, oh, maybe the tornado is way over here. Maybe they're being chased by a tornado, it's and he's just an idiot. Beautiful. You had to have seen this thing. You just hit him, and he just stops the car, like, huh? Like, and I'm like, you didn't see this, and so okay. And this is such a Nolan thing, which is the concept of the noble choice that has to be made only because it is a noble choice and not because it makes anything resembling logical sense. Where a character has to act this way just because they've written themselves into a corner. It, it was the ending of The Dark Knight all over again. No, I killed those people. But well, can we blame it on the Jedi? No, no, no. Uh, no but Commissioner Gordon runs oh, the police. The this way. No. Gotta be, and he, they recycle the exact same thing. No, 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 man! <laughs> same people telling the exact same story again and again. We have Kevin Costner pull a Batman and go, No, I must be the martyr. This is the noble choice, because you can't out yourself, Clark, even though there are a thousand ways you could do this. Because, well, what happens? First of all, they're not even smart enough to have the tornado, like, maybe not Kevin Costner. No, they do the dog trope. The boomer will live. Yeah, they, they get they get Boomer out. He's in the car. So instead Costner of doing the logical thing, which is, hey, Kevin Costner. Kind of dog for a dad. You, you know, or the logical thing, which would be, hey, dad, you guard mom. I will sneak away and grab Boomer as fast as I can, you know, and do this. Because everybody else is running away from a tornado. Like, apparently he can do, like, crucify a truck in a truck stop but he can't out himself in the middle of a tornado when everybody else is distracted. No, instead, Kevin Costner goes back for the dog, gets stuck, and 
literally Clark is staring at his dad. Like, I can do this, I can save you, I can do something. And Kevin Costner, in the blandest way possible, is like, mm -mm, no, mm -mm. Might take Casey or Ace his hand. No, stop, cease, desist, please wait. Like Willy Wonka, yeah. like, no, please stop. <laughs> no, and, no, it's meant to be. It's meant to be, and he, and dies in the most blandest way. I mean, he even dies bland. He sits there with a tornado barreling towards him. He's just like, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Like, oh, yeah, the, the, like, like the tornado takes it. Uh, it's not even like a tornado. It doesn't fly up or anything. It's like a light fog that just sort of graces I'm over I'm sorry, if a tornado was barreling there. towards me, I would be like, no. Fuck this shit. You get your super ass over here, <laughs> and you pick me up, and you drag me over there. And even if I have the... The nobility, the the Nolan style nobility. To go, no, no, we'll try. I'm gonna do this. I still would not sit there and be like, okay, here we go, tornado. What? I, I, I would be like, oh, my eyes would be, I would be shielding myself. My <laughs> eyes would be open. It is. I mean, Doug and I laughed. We literally it's really fun. And like, I know some people are just like, I cried at that scene. I mean, we cried. We cried with laughter. laughter. I mean, and our, I don't know what it's been like in some other screenings, but in ours, there's like, snickering. There was snickering. There were people who were whispering, like, seriously, did that just happen? Like, they were trying to make sense of it. You know, it, it it's just one of the most nonsensical scenes I've ever seen put to celluloid, you know? And you didn't need to do the Donner film death all over again. You didn't need to have the backstory to begin with. Well, it, it, we've seen it. But the Donner death, at least, it makes more sense as a character. That was always, and that's the problem with this woman, does not understand Superman's character. Superman could Is not stop him from dying. That in was the, the thing film. that he, he as, could. Yeah, even as a god, he cannot stop. Death. He can't stop nature. Yeah, there are some things which plays into the ending, which is really screwy with the traveling back in time, but at least it connects to that somehow. It doesn't really connect anywhere here. It's just like, I... It's just martyr. Yeah, yeah in the first the one, martyr. it was like, in the Donner film, it's all my powers, and I couldn't save him. I could not save him, versus here, all my powers, and he Would not. Will yeah, not. Will not. He didn't want me to save him. Yeah. <laughs> You know, but if you're at a truck stop and somebody picks on you, yeah, I'll crucify a truck stop. Yeah. You know, and that sounds like nitpicking in some cases, but it bothers me because the script is going to such lengths to make it about this. Hammer this shit. <laughs> and I'm just going to say, I'm done with the Jesus imagery. This was the same mistake the Singer film made, and why everybody was going on about this and how great it is. I was like, again, another mistake the Singer film made. All the Jesus imagery. Mm. Superman has never been Jesus. I don't get where this comes from. Well, it's well, he I is mean, a Greek god with a Moses backstory. The only similarity is this: he's got two daddies, you know, because he was sent to Earth. But in my opinion, that is just as much a Moses sort of backstory. Throw him in a basket and kick yeah, him out. Yeah, I mean, it, it's you know, Moses, and really. he is basically sort of a god who is trying to figure out what it means to be human. Well, what it is, it's the responsibility yeah. of. Of the power, I mean, it's Spider-Man essentially is what it's trying to be. With the great power comes great responsibility. He has all the power in the world. What does that mean? What are the choices you make? And you know, Jesus went the peaceful route, as the story says, and he gets killed. So I guess everyone thinks they have to make them a martyr all but, the but time. But the thing is, Superman is not. He's not a martyr. I, last time I looked, Jesus in the Bible did not go around fighting crime and pummeling alien <laughs> overlords and beating the shit out of yeah, people. Yeah, it, it does not. The metaphor off. just doesn't work. You know, the idea that he is a Greek god, or in some cases he's more like the Old Testament god, where it's just like, you piss me off, there'll be wrath. I'll beat you to a pulp. You'll live, but I'll beat you to a pulp. You know, and this is also the problem of making him Batman, which is when they do a Justice League movie... What are these two going to talk about? Because that's always the thing about those two is they're always so different. They have the exact same backstory now. Well, you know, I had a troubled childhood. Well, oh, so, so did, did I. I. Well, I ran around like a hobo with a beard. Me too. <laughs> uh, well, um, I basically think that there's a lot of evil out there, but in the end, these people will prove that they can still do good. Right here. <laughs> and I totally killed a guy. No, I, I didn't do that. Well, well, you see, I, I, I didn't have a choice. I mean, you, you had a choice, right? Well, 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 who's the guy? Uh, well, uh, just general, some general, and he was attacking. Well, was he gonna kill your girlfriend? Because mine died. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I saved my girlfriend. She was there for some reason. I don't even remember. She was, like, on a plane. She was kind of distracting, actually, in the middle of this epic battle. Well, 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 who was he gonna kill, then? Uh, I was some family for tourists. Your family? No. 
So you snapped the guy's neck for four people you, you don't even know. Uh, uh, yeah. I let a cloud, a psychopath, kill my girlfriend. I, I let well, you, didn't, you didn't even snap his, you know, like the rope or something? Because I heard he was hanging there and... No! And I just snapped the guy's neck. Okay, got it, got it. I mean, what are you gonna do? You are fucked up. Yeah, what? I thought I had issues. I dress up yeah. like a fucking bat. You snapped the guy's neck because he's gonna kill tourists. You know, the, the, we'll, we'll survive. Well, where were you when all the art people were being taken up and thrown down like flapjacks over and over? Yeah, I mean, this is the problem I've had. Could you snap his neck then? Oh my God, I just realized this right now in this one moment. In this moment. In this moment. <laughs> this is the biggest issue. It's not just that they made Superman Batman. They fucking made Batman Superman. He's got all the morals now. And it's like, <laughs> I'm not going to kill him no matter what. I'm going to make the noble choice and drive that nuclear bomb out. I'm just like, what the hell? <laughs> what is this world coming to? Yeah, I'm like, this is so confused <laughs> now. Like, And, you know, that's part of the problem is I, I don't think they have a concept of what the... The Superman character is. Uh, you know what? Yeah, the Justice League starts. They're just both gonna be brooding in the corner. It's like, no, no, I want that corner to brood. In. No, I want the corner to brood. No, I want. Yeah. I'm in more pain. No, I'm in more pain. This is. I mean, this is the problem, and that's why you know the the Singer film. I, I like this movie in some respects more than the Singer film for an entertainment value. Not until the halfway point, though. I mean. But but this is some of what I'm saying, which is like I get. Nolan fanboys that you like it. I get it that you can look at it and say, I had fun. I had fun in, in movies that aren't great either. I had fun in Iron Man 3. Is Iron Man 3 a great film? <laughs> Do you think Iron Man 3 is a film you should rally around? Like, how dare you criticize Iron Man 3? Like, I think Robert Downey Jr. is a person to rally around. Yeah, I'll give you that. He is made there a, any... He made like an eight-month-year-old kid cry because he didn't look enough like Iron Man. He still owned it. Here's the thing. I, people are like saying, I don't get what you're saying. The acting's fine. Is that what we want from a Superman movie? Fine. <laughs> I mean, this is the thing. I mean, is there anybody in this movie like Robert Downey Jr. that you're just like, bad ass. I, I'm totally going to defend at least this actor. Yeah. Can you yeah. defend nope. Russell? No. I mean, even Russell Crowe, people are just like, oh, no, he's awesome. I'm like, he's kind of awesome because the script just made him warp around and kind of have that role. Yeah, but he's not what he could do. Was what was what awesome. he could do was awesome. His performance is adequate. His for powers the are awesome, and that is what is. Wrong. I mean, we're again, we're we're getting back to the review here, but that is what this movie focuses on. It, what is awesome is the powers, not the people. Yeah, and I mean that's just my thing. It's just like there is nothing really to rally around this film that may. Yeah, it's it's fun. I had fun, but I, and when it's all said and done, we're basically just settling for something that we can go. Yeah, I was all right. Mm. You know, for a $250 million Superman movie. So, I didn't even think it was all right. I, I thought it sucked. Yeah, <laughs> he hates it more than I did. And again, and I... Yeah, you're bitching more. <laughs> I'm bitching more because people go on and on about how dare you criticize it. But in the end, I get it. It's fun, you know, in certain respects. But we're settling for sloppy seconds here. That's really what it comes down to. When it's all sloppy said and done, seconds. when it's all said and done, we've got a, a half-assed, okay, Marvel movie. <laughs> That uh, that Nolan I don't even think that, that basically I could some people are trying to defend Marvel. as the Dark Knight, and it's not even the same ballpark. I, I could connect even the worst Marvel, well, the worst reason Marvel movies. I could connect with the characters. I could never connect with anyone. Well, that's movie. part of the film's problem is I think they they keep trying to make Superman relatable in a sense while forgetting that that's not who he is. But I could relate to Christopher Reeve though. You can you relate yeah, to I relate okay. to those original characters. You relate to Christopher Reeve. You know what? Screw it. I think Spoiler Corner is just going to go on. <laughs> I you know what? Don't edit this down because you can relate to Christopher Reeve but in the sense that somebody who has immense power you know you can relate to that sense of being a father with a small child like Superman is our father and we are the children that he wants to protect us you can't relate to him in the Marvel sense of I'm just some normal average kid who's gonna and that's what they tried to do like no he's like this normal average kid he's mopey he's a little well, emo no no so Superman was always sort of the normal average guy though I thought you know because that was always a thing he's a tough character to write for he's because an, he is so friggin normal he is such a boy scout he's he an a, he's boys. an average boy scout but that's yeah. it he's an average boy scout how many kids do you know who are really truly boy scouts like that is the joke we always use it as an insult well, correct. Of, yeah you know, and that's the thing, and 
they took that out of, they even took the romantic love interest, which bugs me, because Superman, really, when you get down to it, how many superheroes have, okay, uh, let me ask you this, how many superheroes are confident around women? I, I do not know how many superheroes there even are in the world. So. How many How many have a, what you would call a healthy, sort of confident relationship? Anyone's gonna wear tights and fight crime, I don't think should be dated by other people. But the most confident guy I can think of off the top of my head, um, I'm gonna go with Tony Stark, Iron Man. He's a freaking womanizer, let's be honest here. Like, the, the, his relationship with Pepper Potts eventually gets there, but it's nothing. Superman was always kind of confident. He's just like, Lois doesn't really scare him in that respect. You know, if anything, his other persona... He can never reveal it. who he was. He can never reveal who he was, but he obviously really likes her. They have a shared romance that's completely obliterated in this movie. Yeah, no, they kiss at there the is, end. They kiss against at the end. Against the rubble. Like, <laughs> yeah, against the rubble, and I'm like, where did this come from? I had no hints of romance. This was a platonic relationship. Because you're like, Lois Lane and I'm Superman. It's that's almost just what's like, again, happen. because this is aimed for a crowd where, like, well, 14-year-old boys kissing Zicky. No, I think it's like, more like they know, just have to be that A normal relationship. Because I'm Superman, you're Lois Lane. Not because our characters say we have to do this, but because by name, that's what we have to do. By duty, that's what we have to do. Yeah, you know, and, and that's just, just everything's done by duty, not by character. Yeah, and well, and that's my problem. Yeah, that's just my problem with every decision in this movie. Going back to Kevin Costner, it's I'm saying this is my duty because the script told me so, mm -hmm. not because it makes any sort of sense or is advancing the plot any. Mm -hmm. So. There it is. Uh, well, there's our spoilers. Um, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go crucify myself. <laughs> Get some nails. Oh, that hurts. It, it, it had a few good action scenes. <laughs> I am Martyr Man. <laughs>